had a dream about it the night before, and it was like a vision. An amazing scene. Flash bulbs popping close to 100,000 fans. You know, I didn't know if they knew who to root for. First ever National Football League regular season game abroad. Why not have them root for us? So when we're on the field, we can get them hype and, you know, get them to be our 12th man. There's 100,000 people there. We knew at the time that we were making the decision to go down to Mexico that the largest population of NFL fans outside the United States is actually Mexico City. And so I looked at it, I went to Commissioner Tagliabue and I said, look, we've got one season left at Sun Devil Stadium. We're happy to give up a game, especially if it's an early game, and play a home game regular season. It had never been done in regular season. It really was a different energy where the fans were going nuts the entire time. I just remember the crowd just yelling no matter what. They just wanted to see us go out there and, and play because you know, they didn't get a lot of football. They had some football, American football out there, but not a lot. When the Cardinals first got Rolando Cantu through the uh, international program, I, I think it was it was interesting at the time, but it was clear that the NFL was moving in a direction where they were trying to bring in these international players. And clearly, the Cardinals, uh, being so close to Mexico, wanting to make some inroads in Mexico, uh, it, had, it was a big a deal to them to bring in a Mexican-born player like that. There aren't a lot of expectations initially. You know they're going to be around uh, because that you get that roster exemption for them. No. So you're not necessarily sure if they're going to play, but they're certainly going to be around and they're going to learn the game and, and they have a background there, so it's not like he didn't fit in either. You know, it's 2005, it was still at the beginning of when Tom Brady was becoming a superstar, but he had already won a couple of Super Bowls, so it was, you know, he was, he was a big deal. And I remember Luis Sendejas, who worked for the Cardinals at the time, talking to him when I was doing the Rolando story and he said, you know how big Tom Brady is? And I was like, sure. And he said, Luis said, well, Rolando was just as big as Tom Brady in Mexico. When he goes down there, you'll see it. Kurt Warner got off our airplane and nobody really did much. And Larry Fitzgerald got off the airplane and nobody really did much. And then all of a sudden, Rolando uh, can too, and they just swarm on him. They didn't know who some of these other guys were that were just walking past him. It seemed like about a thousand reporters came around Rolando when we got off the plane. The first emotion is that should have been there you know, obviously active, but that was decided the week of the, the game. But once you're there, it was, it was the smell of the grass, the environment, the people that were just hungry to be a part of that first regular season games. It was a stadium that nobody had ever played in. So, you know, you're used to going, back then you're used to traveling to St. Louis, you know, traveling to Seattle. This was totally different. Estadio Azteca was new to everybody, right? So the environment, the vibe, the players in that tunnel wanted to perform that day. It was obviously from the flex, from the warm-ups, that they just wanted that game to start right away. For us, we, we knew that if we just went out and played our game, that we would have success. Go, man. Let's go, man. We are seeing a lot of flashballs popping. You don't see those in the States. We are seeing them go off here tonight as uh, the crowd is expected to get near 100,000. Luis Andejas, former senior director for community relations, was involved in that idea of running out with the flag. The story I heard was that Luis Andejas was putting together a flag, right? And that a player was gonna run out of the tunnel with it first. Whoever ran out with this flag was gonna be remembered forever. I remember when we were coming out for intros, somebody had a flag and they had said, somebody do it. It was me telling Anthony Edwards 
to grab a flag. That's all it was. I didn't huddle with anybody. And I'm not trying to take full credit for it, but there was never, if, they, if that was the case, I, Anthony and I, we didn't, we didn't know anything about it. That's Robert's idea, and it was brought to me. And I searched out my contact at the stadium to see if we could even get a flag. He actually came out, we did warm-ups, and he came off and had this idea. Robert's like, hey, we need to get a flag. We need a flag. I need to get the, the Mexico flag, because I thought he was, when he first said flag, I'm like, USA, you know? No, 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 Mexico, Mexico flag, Mexico flag, you know? And I said, hold on, let me see what I can do. So here I am rushing to try to get my contact, see if we can locate a flag somewhere close. 10 to 15 minutes to get all that, that done because they had just finished warming up and normally about 15 minutes where they're back in the locker room before they come back out for the game. When we were in that tunnel right before we went out to the game, he comes up to me, I'm in the front, and I'm like egging guys on, you know, pounding heads and head butting each other. And, and he comes up and he unrolls this flag and it was on like a broomstick handle um, and literally gave it to me maybe 10 seconds before I ran out, when, before they called my name. We have 103,467 on hand, an NFL regular season record. Wow, how about that for a number? Their suites, they didn't count the number of people that were up there. So when you buy a suite, they didn't sell tickets. It was just, you could invite 40 people up there if you wanted. So they had no idea how many people were in those suites. And the number, they believe that's a low estimate of who was actually in the stadium that day because they think there might have been another 15 or 20,000 people in the suites that were just not counted. Massive, massive. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a large stadium. This is unbelievably spread out. I mean, just pushed out. I don't think people realize how many folks that is in one place. Our broadcast position was up, but it was in the open. So we had a lot of fans around us from what I recall. I just remember it being loud the entire game, that it, it felt like a big party. <laughs> it felt like a big party. It was pretty amazing, you know. It, as a kid, you would see it a lot, right? You would see it on TV and and sometimes you would say, one day I, I want to walk that field. I was there. I was walking it with my Cardinals, right? And uh, just to see the environment, um, 103,000 people in their seats waiting for the game. When you would see it on TV, you would see important matches in Mexico played their championships, um, World Cups, and, and you would say, okay, is this, is this actually happening, an NFL? professional game is being played here, one that counts, right? And I, for me, just walking out, the smell of the grass, um, saying hi to thousands of people. People were, were chanting my name, and, and obviously, it gets to the point where I was standing on the side and they were still chanting my name, and I was like, okay, I gotta turn back, I gotta say hi. But it was, it was, it was great, man, it was a great experience. The energy in the tunnel, and I, I speak for probably everybody that's ever played in the NFL. The most primal time you'll ever have. Guys are warmed up, juiced up, and they're ready for battle. That last little period in that tunnel is the most explosive. What a great scene. Robert Griffith with the Mexican national flag waving it. I go out with the flag and I just felt 10 feet tall, man. Like I felt like every step I was taking was just um, magnetized. And I'm just looking at how, really how pumped I am. Not just trying to get guys, you know, but when I felt it, it was, it was a real moment. I'd say for probably about seven to 10, 10 to seven, 10, 15 seconds, um, it got loud. Now all of a sudden, Robert Griffith comes right out of that hat, waving the Mexican flag. And then by the time I got to midfield, it was almost like I could have just flew away. <laughs> I mean, it was absolutely incredible. I felt the flag was the best way for me to represent that respect.
I thought it pulled us together and said, you know, we're here for you guys. I ran out with a Mexican flag in Mexico. I hope that it showed respect and homage to, you know, them being in attendance. If there was going to be anybody, he, he was the guy. He did it justice. It was a beautiful moment. And I know that a lot of Cardinal fans won't ever forget that. And I know he won't ever forget that. Anymore. Just to see it fulfilled, that's good. And that's what I'm asked them to do a lot of times. You know, hey, I need to take care of this. I need to take care of that. But this is something I want to do, Anthony. And we made it happen that day. And once he ran out, that was kind of like, you know what? Mexico, the Cardinals are here. Los Cardenales han llegado. Quite honestly, after the flag, you know, I can honestly say they wanted us to win. I literally went and touched. I go, get off the field. I remember high-fiving all my guys, and I just felt like I had a lithium battery, batter, battery that I was just touching every guy with because we went out there and we took care of business. If you do recall, they jumped out on us 14 to nothing before we ever took the field. They had two turnovers and scored. I, what's going on here? Okay, so we're down. Are we gonna lose? No, we ain't gonna lose. We're gonna beat these guys up, man. And I remember the energy in that huddle was incredible. Warner was out, Josh McCown was in. And what happened was that we started slowly running the ball with Marcel Ship. And then Larry caught a big pass. In the end zone, far side, Fitzgerald goes up, touchdown, Arizona! Larry Fitzgerald with his second of the year. Anquan Bolden caught a, an amazing pass down the field. Hit as he delivers, firing deep over the middle, it's caught by Bolden to the one, he backs into the end zone, touchdown, Cardinals! Berry had a sack. I remember my sacks. I, I remember having a two-piece no fries in that game too. Uh, thank you so much. Here comes Barry, right on cue, he forced the fumble, and it's picked up by Pace inside the 10, and he's tackled on the eight yard line. Everything fed off each other. The offense started performing because the defense started holding them on third down. As we started to take control of the game, we won the crowd over eventually. And we can see the tide turning very quickly, and then, uh, as you know, they were screaming, defense for us. Right? We were doing this with the crowd. Once the defense started making their stops on third down, it was evident that the fans were chanting Cardenales, right? And when that happened, everybody started like, okay, what's going on here? What are they saying, Cantu? I was on the sideline next to Dennis Green. It was like, constantly I was trying to like, translate the chants and the cheering in the middle of the game. There was a lot of noise, but that noise was just noise to most of the players because they didn't know what we were saying. It was, you know, the birth of international football for the NFL. For the Cardinals to be the first ones there and for it to be embraced the way it was, I think it had a lot to do with where we are now with the league. I think it really opened up, um, you know, the pathway for the league to start looking at it and how do we bring the, the, the regular season games uh, to uh, international destinations. You saw Shortly thereafter, um, our ability to play a game in Mexico during the regular season made it a lot easier for us to make the case to our ownership that as a smart next step was to consider playing a game overseas, you know, across the Atlantic Ocean in London. And, you know, London was able to show that they could do that in large part based on what we had proven out in Mexico. We're cemented in history, in American football history in Mexico because of that game. 103,000 people witnessed it. Another couple million people witnessed it on television. Every single year, once the 2nd of October, El 2 de Octubre rolls around, we're there. We're there doing interviews. We're there remembering what happened that day in the Estadio Azteca, which was a carnal win. You know, the picture and the frame that everybody remembers is that, right? Number 34, Robert Griffith, our safety, running out, just bursting out of that tunnel and doing what nobody's ever done before. I thought it was uh, one of the biggest moments of my career, believe it or not. I mean, 195, 200 games, uh, but the way Stadio Azteca and the Mexican people reacted to that flag and I'm, I mean, 
I, I got goosebumps under here. I mean, it was absolutely in, in fuego, <laughs> but it was in freaking incredible. Fans have come to their feet on the far side as Bertrand Berry has the Mexican flag and is running around with it. Over on the far side, you can hear the fans. It being one of the captains at the time, I mean, and knowing that we were going to win the game, you get afforded some liberties. And so uh, they gave me the freedom to go and take the flag. I kind of wanted to have my crack at it. I, I would have loved to have run out, but Griff beat me to it. <laughs> Took it around the stadium, and, and it was cool. I, it was a great experience. Something that I'll never forget. I wanted to, to experience that love with, with this group to let them know that we, you know, we, we, we love them. We appreciate them coming out and supporting and, and we wanted to, to put on a show for them. You know, they hadn't experienced a lot of American football at Azteca Stadium, so uh, we wanted to, to make sure that we gave them something that they could really cheer for. So B-Train gives me the flag and I, I take it over and then I have to do a bunch of media um, interviews right after the game on the sideline, which was very, really cool. And uh, so I have the flag on my shoulder, right? And obviously, you know, in between interviews, I would wave the flag like Robert, like B-Train, and they got the same reaction. The first international game in the history of the National Football League. I took the flag and I put it in the locker room. Back then, before they remodeled the Estadio Azteca, the locker room was not as big and as well secured, right? So that flag disappeared from my locker. Uh, I have no idea where it's at. Whoever has it has a piece of history because, you know, the Cardinals ran out of the tunnel with that flag. Somebody took the flag, obviously, right? Um, yeah, it could have been anybody. Uh, there's been things taken out of locker rooms before, right? Uh, but yeah, I, I have no idea who took it. So it wouldn't be in your storage. It would not be in my storage.